Hey guys, this is Dr. Hub. Today we'll look at the muscles of the mastication. So muscles of the mastication. So under the muscles of mastication, we are going to focus on the lateral pterygoid. So under the lateral pterygoid, what is the origin? The origin is the upper head of the infratemporal surface. So there is a upper head and there is a lower head. So the upper head will be from the infratemporal surface. So infratemporal surface and as well as the sphenoid bone. So it is from the infratemporal surface as well as a part of the sphenoid bone. So let's write it sphenoid bone. Next is we look at the lower head. So under the lower head, it is a lateral pterygoid plate. It is a lateral pterygoid plate. So this was the origin of the lateral pterygoid. Next, let's look at the insertion. The insertion will be the upper head. The upper head is going to be in the pterygoid fovea. So it is going to be in the place of the pterygoid fovea. And then there is a lower head, which will be in the TMJ capsule. So it will be in the TMJ capsule and the articular disc. So it is a TMJ capsule as well as in the articular disc. Next, let's look at the action. So the action is it depresses the mandible. It depresses mandible and this is with the suprahyoid muscles this is with the suprahyoid muscle and next it also leads to the jaw protrusion there is a jaw protrusion next is there is also presence of grinding so there will be grinding that is the side to side movements can be done Next, we'll move on to the medial pterygoid. So, in the medial pterygoid, there is going to be the superficial head. So, there will be a superficial head. Superficial head is nothing but the maxilla. And then comes the presence of the deep head. The deep head is going to be the lateral pterygoid. Deep head is a lateral pterygoid plate and also the palatine bone. So these are the origin. So where is the medial pterygoid inserted? The so insertion of the medial pterygoid is the angle of the mandible. So this is the angle of the mandible. And it is also inserted in the ramus of the mandible. So ramus of the mandible. So the ramus of the mandible behind the mandible of foramen. So this will be behind the mandibular foramen next is what is the action the action is it elevates the mandible so it elevates the mandible then there is also the jaw protrusion which is done and there is presence of the grinding so grinding means it is side to side movements now uh, let's try to visualize this So this will be the mandible and let's look at the parts, the infratemporal crest, then there are two heads which we saw, this will be the upper head of the mandible lateral pterygoid and this will be the lower head of the pterygoid. And there will be a gap in between separating the two. So this will be the upper head of the lateral pterygoid. The origins, insertions we have already discussed. So this will be the upper head, this will be the lower head. The other hand, the labelings here, it will be the articulate disc. And there will be a capsule. Capsule as well as the disc. Articulation disc. Next, below this, we will have the pterygoids. So there will be a pterygoid here. This will be the superficial and this will be the deep 
very good and below this is the mandible that is the we know we call it the rams of mandible and on the other hand here we would call this as the maxillary tuberosity mt so this is a rough diagram about where it is located next we will move on to the temporalis so looking at the temporalis this is uh, the origin will be the temporal temporal fossa so it is a temporal fossa which is the origin as well as a temporal fascia so where is this inserted the insertion is nothing but the ramus of mandible the ramus of the mandible as well as a coronoid process so it is inserted in the ramus of mandible as well as the coronoid process so what is the function of the temporalis the function is that it elevates the mandible so there is elevates the mandible and it also provides side to side movement so there is side to side movements and there is also a jaw retraction next we'll look at the before that we'll look at the diagram so let's draw a rough diagram assuming this is a skull so here we have the temporal fascia we're writing it as tf and this will be the temporalis the temporalis muscle and in the bottom the site where it is attached it will be the coronoid process so this was a pict picturization of the temporalis muscle next moving on to the, the masseter so in terms of the masseter this is the origin is from the zygomatic arch so the origin is from the zygomatic arch so this will be the origin next comes the part of the insertion so insertion it takes place in the ramus of mandible so ramus of mandible will be the insertion and what will be the function of this the function is nothing but it elevates the mandible there is elevates the mandible as well as there is a jaw protrusion so it elevates the mandible or there is a jaw protrusion so let's uh, pictureize this so we have a skull here then comes a this will be the zygomatic arch so from the zygomatic arch this masseter is present from is inserted here so as we know the origin is from the zygomatic arch and the insertion is at the ramus of mandible so what is the function of this it elevates the mandible and as well as protrudes the jaw so this is nothing but the masseter muscle 